Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Connect video. And we are very excited to be bringing you the latest and greatest in iPhone app technology. Yes, that's right. It's time for us to get OCO'd with the OCO app from Eyes. Eyes, E Y E S? No, A Y E S. But what is the OCO all about? Corey, OCO us. I. <laughs> <laughs> when, how did you turn OCO into a verb? Well, that's the first, I feel the, like the any, first question. anything can be turned into a verb if that's, you try hard enough. That's very true. Google yeah. showed that, Facebook showed that. Okay. There you go. All right. Well, I will uh, OCO you uh, that yeah, sometime today. So, <laughs> <laughs> OCO is an iPhone only app and it's designed to assist people who are visually impaired across the street. Now, what I mean by assisting across the street, it's not like the app uh, takes your hand and walks you across the street. That would be nice. It would be kind of interesting. Yeah. But instead, what it does is it uses the back camera on your device and coupled with, uh, I would have to assume there's some AI oh, or definitely sure. some recognition going on. And uh, when you hold your camera up across the street, it's going to see the traffic signals across the street and it's going to recognize three different signals. First, it's gonna recognize the walk sign, Second, the don't walk sign, and last, the countdown. Right off the top, for all of our certified orientation and mobility specialists out there, the first thing I wanna say is this is not a replacement for O&M skills. This is not a replacement for learning how to use a cane or using a dog guide, but it's an extra tool that you can add to your toolbox. I will say though, the uh, robotic dog that I've seen is a replacement for your O&M skills, so. I had bad luck with that. I took him out in the rain, he got <laughs> rusted, and then I got stuck. So we're, I don't think we're there yet, but maybe a seeing eye pony. I've oh, heard those good things. So. Talking. But let's look at Oko today. So it's a real simple app, which I, I, I like. So Corey, how does it tell the user what the sign is uh, showing them? Yeah. So it's going to do it in two, well, three different ways. So there is a visual kind of display when it changes from walk to don't walk. Mm -hmm. So you will see a green and a red flashing, okay. I think. Okay. Although, yes. um, we'll want to, well, well, let's confirm that when we actually do our demo here Great because idea. I can't see the screen. <laughs> uh, but it also beeps and there's three different beeps and, and they're, they're differing enough that we can tell what they mean. Mm -hmm. And then last, there's haptic. So we can feel the phone vibrating in different patterns as well so we can tell what those three uh what it's recognizing Excellent. and what it sees and i believe that you can actually disable any of those three things if you don't want them so for example you could turn off the camera if you don't need uh, to have the camera view you could turn off the sounds if you don't want the sounds you could turn off the haptics if you don't want the haptics yeah exactly so depending on what your vision loss might be or if you're an individual who's deaf blind and mm -hmm. you just want the haptics yeah. whatever it might be yeah. also under the and that's all done under the settings piece sure. one thing you can also change under settings is not only can you disable the sound, but you can change the volume. We're gonna see in just a bit when we demo and actually use it outside, that the sounds can be a little bit loud. So they do give you three settings, loud, uh, normal, and gentle. By default, the app is set to uh, normal. Yes, that so, makes perfect yeah. sense. So why don't we go ahead, let's take a look at the app. Let's listen to a demo uh, of what it sounds like and we will see uh, the app actually in action. Cool. We don't just sit here at the table, Luke. We go out and touch grass. Well, actually, I just sat here at the table. That's very true. You go and do the demo, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the main menu of the app here, let's choose the help option. Help button. Done. Button. And under help, there's a couple things, but we're gonna wanna go look under the dem uh, demonstration section so we can hear what each of these options sound pedestrian like. Traffic, the pedestrian traffic, feedbacks, heading, play, don't walk, signal, feedback, button. All right, here is our don't walk. Okay. And when we hear this, Luke, what yeah. does that mean? What should we not do? <laughs> we should do? immediately self across the road. <laughs> no, don't listen to Luke. <laughs> if you hear or feel this pattern, it is don't walk. Play, don't walk, signal, feedback. All right, Corey, so we saw you using that outside, it seemed to work pretty well. Now, with the haptics, did you feel the phone vibrating at the same speed as the beep was beeping? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they were in tune with each other. So, it, it, yep, exactly. Yeah. So you can vibrate. tell, even without hearing the sound, you can still tell whether you should be walking or not. Yep. All right, let's go on to the next one. Play walk signal feedback button. All right, walk. Walk. So <clears throat> that um, presumably you're supposed to put on a uh, uh, walk this way? Yeah, that's true. It does. Yeah. That'd be awesome if the demo <laughs> is Aerosmith. Uh, so let's take a listen. Play walk signal feedback. So 
So with that one, very different in terms of the speed of the beeps and obviously in terms of the haptics, that's gonna relay really nicely as well because there's gonna be a very clear difference between those slow beeps for the don't walk and then the much faster beeps for uh, the walk and that the vibrations obviously yeah. will mirror that. Yep, and yeah. it's loud enough uh, being outside and that higher oh, yeah. pitch cuts through, mm -hmm. you know, traffic noise and outdoor noise. So yeah, you're absolutely able to hear it. And obviously it's very different, even though the tone is the same, yes. the, the pattern yes, and yes. speed is now, different enough. Now, Corey, when I'm crossing the road, there is one other piece of information that I like to get. Yes. And that is where is the nearest coffee? No, that's not it. It's, <laughs> uh, it is, uh, how long do I have to get across? Sure. So that is the third thing it can do. Let's take a listen. Play countdown signal. Countdown signal. Corey, I'm pretty sure I had a uh, video game that used to make a very similar noise to that. I know, I, I got that same kind of vibes, yeah. um, and it almost is almost musical enough that as I was crossing and it was coming up to the end, I was yeah. like starting to strut a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Start walking in rhythm with the yeah, beats. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, I have a question though. So uh, with that particular one, yeah. how you don't actually know the number of seconds you have left. That is it's correct. It's just saying, hey, it's currently counting down. So you're no longer on the walk. You're not, not on the don't walk. You're in between the two stages. But you know the don't walk is coming yes, shortly. Coming yep, yep, now, yep. this is a good question. Throw this down in the comments if you know the answer. Uh, we're based in the United States. I'm curious, in the United States, mm. is the countdown standard? Is it always 20 seconds? Uh, or does it vary depending on the uh, light, the traffic light that you're at? Mm. I will say uh, in the UK, every single crossing is audible. Really? So yeah. there's the, uh, uh, the accessible pedestrian signals on all of them? Yep. Okay. Uh, however, the country is a lot smaller, so you know, sure. it's a lot easier for us to do. Sure. Yeah. And this obviously could be used in conjunction with those audible or those accessible pedestrian signals. If those are a technology that you're used to using, you can still use that combined with the OCO app. What I And, and I like those APSs. The, the issue that I have sometimes with them is that it's hard to find the button. Oh, I've sure. had I've had crossings where the button is nowhere near the corner, um, and so sometimes you spend more time trying to find that audio product that 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 uh, signal the yeah. button to get it started. Mm -hmm. So it's nice just to be able to pull out your iPhone, have the app right there, set it, uh, you know, point it across, mm -hmm. and you're ready to go. All right. The other really cool thing that the Oco app can help with, and I think I, I potentially have a little suggestion for uh, the crew over at Eyes, is it can help with veering. For some individuals crossing the street, um, it, veering can be an issue, right? You can mm. veer, veer left or right. And a lot of times when you're veering, you don't even realize which direction you're veering in. And so uh, Oco by default will help with veering in the fact that if those, if you stop hearing the walk, don't walk so sound, mm -hmm. then obviously you know your camera's no longer seeing mm. that uh, signal, which means you veered off uh, or you've made it to the I, across I the I feel street. that I have a potential slogan here that okay. I wanna, I'm going to offer it Ooh. for free to Oko. Trademark. Yeah. No, okay. no, no, this is, this is free. Okay. If you stop hearing, that means you're veering. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the issue I had, though, is that when you stop hearing it, you don't know if you veered left or right. 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 It just yeah. went off camera. So I think it would be interesting to figure out how you could do it in a way that's not cognitive overload, mm -hmm. where you could add another audible and tactile uh, message letting you know that if you veered left or right, mm -hmm. uh, which I think could be would be an, a, 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 a nice addition to that app and, and really kind of increase its its uh, usefulness. One other slight wrinkle to that though. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're veering or whether just the way that you're holding the phone is veering? You understand? understand yeah, understand. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You could keep walking straight, but your hand has gone off. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I didn't think of that. Maybe. And maybe the smart people at Eyes have thought of that and yep. why it's not been added, or they just haven't got a great answer. I think for we it. need Good a. Point, uh, I think we need a head-mounted uh, phone uh, holder. That's true. That's, but you oh, gotta make sure you, you keep your head straight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we so. also need a neck brace to yeah, make sure that you don't move your head. I like it. So, Corey, we've seen the Oko app in action. You've tried it out outside. What do you think? 
I like it. I think it does. It's very easy to use. It's pretty accurate. I've had good results with it. Um, our certified orientation mobility specialist here at Vision Forward has been using it with clients and had, has had very good luck with it as well. As I said at the top of the video though, um, this is not a replacement for good O&M skills or your cane or a dog guide, uh, but it is a good a tool to add to your arsenal to make sure you're getting across the streets as safe as possible. If you are using the OCO app, please throw it down in the comments. Let us know how it's working for you. If you found any times where maybe it wasn't so accurate or weird things where it just didn't work, drop it down there. Or if you have some suggestions for eyes on things that they could add to the app, use that comment section down below. Go ahead and like this video if you liked it. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It really does help out the algorithm and helps push our videos out. And so we appreciate everything that you do to support our channel. And if you would like to see us interviewing Michael Jansen, one of the developers of the app, then you can check out our previous Tech Connect Live video, which there should be somewhere up here, a uh, link so you can go check that out. And of course, you can get in touch with us if you would like to. We have three different methods. Number one is email techconnect at vision-forward.org. You can pick up the phone and dial 414-615-0103 and join us on the interweb at vision-forward.org. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next time. I thought that turned out okay. <laughs>